How do I, how do I follow that up? There's so much truth in that last part right there. It was interesting, I was perusing Facebook this morning and I came across one of our mission, retired missionaries' uh, pages and she had something posted on there. Uh, it, it was, she said, uh, I copied from my former professor's page. Thanks, doctor. I don't know who the doctor is, but obviously it was a former professor, but this is what it was, was about. It said, there's a number of things on here. It said, number one, my mother taught me to appreciate a job well done. If you're going to kill each other, do it outside. I just finished cleaning. My mother taught me religion. You better pray that will come out of the carpet. My mother taught me about time travel. If you don't straighten up, I'm going to knock you into the middle of next week. My mother taught me about logic. Because I said so, that's why. My mother taught me more logic. If you fall out of that swing and break your neck, you're not going to the store with me. <laughs> My... <laughs> My mother taught me foresight. Make sure you wear clean underwear in case if you're in an accident. My mother taught me irony. Keep crying and I'll give you something to cry about. My mother taught me about the science of osmosis. Shut your mouth and eat your supper. <laughs> my, <laughs> my mother taught me about contortionism. Will you look at the dirt on the back of your neck? My mother taught me about stamina. You sit there until all that spinach is gone. In my case, it was spaghetti. My mother taught me about weather. This room of yours looks like a tornado went through it. My mother taught me about hypocrisy. If I told you once, I've told you a million times, don't exaggerate. My mother, my mother taught me the circle of life. I brought you into this world and I could take you out. My, my mother taught me about behavior modification. Stop acting like your father. <laughs> My mother taught me about envy. There are millions of less fortunate children in this world who don't have wonderful parents like you do. My mother taught me about anticipation. Just wait until we get home. My mother taught me about receiving. You're going to get it when we get home. My mother taught me about medical science. If you don't stop crossing your eyes, it's going to freeze that way. She taught me about ESP. Put your sweater on. Don't you think I know when you're cold? My mother taught me humor. When that lawnmower cuts your foot off, don't you come running to me. She taught me how to become an adult. If you don't eat your vegetables, you'll never grow up. She taught me genetics. You're just like your father. My mother taught me about my roots. Shut that door behind you. Do you think you were born in a barn? She taught me wisdom. When you, go to, when you get to be my age, you'll understand. And my mother taught me about justice. One day you'll have kids, and I hope, hope they turn out just like you. <laughs> I thought that was cute. It was really funny. I've heard some of those. I'm not going to say which ones. But would you please stand with me this morning as we read from Matthew chapter 27, verses 55 and 56. Matthew 27, 55 and 56. And many women who followed Jesus from Galilee ministered to him, were, looking, were there looking on from afar. Among those were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and, Mary, uh, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. Let's pray. Father, again, thank you for moms. And Lord, we just bless you and praise you for them. And Lord, we just ask for your continued blessings upon them as they serve you and as they serve their families, as they train up their children and your ways. I also thank you for the dads too. But Father, we ask for your blessing specifically on moms today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. You can smile at somebody as you have a seat this morning. We can learn a lot about God's heart and about spiritual leadership from the heart of a mother. One mom was out walking with her four-year-old daughter when the girl picked up something and, from the ground and started to put it in her mouth. We had that problem with our youngest. But this little girl started to put it in her mouth, and the mother tells what happens in her own words. She said, I took the item away from her and asked her not to do that. And the daughter quickly asked, why? Because it's been lying outside. You don't know where it's been. It's dirty. It probably has germs, I replied. At this point, my daughter looked at me with total admiration and asked, wow, how do you know all that stuff? I thought quickly and said, 
all moms must know this stuff. It's on the mommy test. You have to know it or they don't let you be a mommy. We walked along in silence for two or three minutes, and she pondered this new information. Oh, I get it, she beamed. So if you don't pass the test, you have to be the daddy. (laughs) I smiled and replied, exactly. (laughs) Bless you, moms. You've passed the mommy test. We want to honor every woman here today. If you're over 18, would you please stand so we can celebrate your serving and applaud the impact you have on so many around you? Would you please, I know you're like, oh, do we have to do this? Yeah, if you're over 18, would you please stand? Can we give them a hand real quick? We appreciate you. And moms, we appreciate you as well. So thank you, ladies. You may have a seat this morning. I'm hoping that you'll be encouraged and affirmed as we look at how important women are uh, and, and how important they are to Jesus as well. Ladies, I want to remind you, if you're over 18, as 18 or over this morning, we do have a gift for you as you leave today. A teacher gave her second grade class a lesson on magnets and what it, a magnet and what it does, and the next day it was a written test, and she included the question, my full name has six letters, the first one is M, and I pick things up, what am I? When the papers were turned in, the teacher was astounded to find that almost 50% had written in mother. Isn't that precious? When we consider the role of women in ministry of Jesus, it becomes apparent that he did not hold to the rabbinical teachings of his day. If you look through scriptures, you'll find this. In fact, his ministry represents a break in Judaism towards and regards to the role of women. Some have called his approach nothing short of revolutionary. Jesus placed a high value on women and saw them as intrinsically equal to men. And this was, that, was that without precedence in contemporary Judaism. We see multiple examples of Jesus interacting with women, confusing the crowds and even his disciples. He regularly addressed women, something unheard of for a rabbi. The Samaritan woman in John 4, the woman caught in adultery in John 8, the the widow at Nain in Luke 7, the woman woman with the bleeding disorder in Luke 8, the Gentile woman in Matthew 15 were all recipients of his care, compassion, and grace. The parable of Jesus was Jesus' favorite way of teaching. They were filled with positive examples of women. You can find these in Matthew 13, Luke 18, Luke 15, and Mark 12. In fact, Jesus assumes that women would learn and encourage Martha to be more like Mary. We find this account where where Martha is working and Mary's at the feet of Jesus. The rabbis, on the other hand, would rather burn the law than teach it to women. Jesus expected the, the women to learn and apply the lessons that he taught. It's important to note that Jesus also held women personally responsible for their own sins. John chapter 4, John 8, and Luke 7 gives us insight to this. So with that in mind... Let's take a look at our text today for Mother's Day, where we can learn some things about the heart of a mother. Again, Matthew 27, 55 and 56. And many women who followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, were there looking on from afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and uh, the mother of Zebedee's sons. God values women he has made and assigns them as guardians of our hearts. They tend to our needs and take care of our hurts and problems because they do not want us to become damaged by the stuff of life. In fact, God has placed in moms something ferocious when it comes to protecting the hearts of their kids. I know we've all seen it at one point or another, or you may have even experienced that. We're going to cover four characteristics of a godly mom from these two verses we've looked at. So let's look at them. Number one, a godly mom is there when you need her. Matthew 27, 55. Many women were there. Several women could be found in the proximity of Jesus throughout his ministry on this earth. In fact, some of them supported him financially. Luke 8, 1 through 3. The 12 were with him. And also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene, of whom seven demons had come out. Joanne, the wife of Cusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others, these women were helping to support them out of their own means. That's Luke 8, 1 through 3. So we find that women have an important role in the Word. If we focus in on Mary, the mother of Jesus, I wonder how many conversations that they had when he was growing up. I wonder how many times Mary met Jesus' needs as he was a child and growing up. 
How many times did Jesus have to deal with unkind, scornful words from others in their community who considered him to be an illegitimate child conceived out of wedlock? Mary was there for him throughout his childhood and continued to be there for him all through his adult years and even through past his death. Many of you could possibly relate sometimes when your mom was there for you. And it's possible that some of you remember times when your mom wasn't. We can think, be thankful for the good memories and learn to forgive the failures of the past. How many know that not everybody's perfect? If you find a perfect church and show up, you've just ruined it, myself included. The most important concern is that you're willing to be there for those around you who need your compassion and acceptance. Number two, a godly mom watches over those they love. Matthew 27, 55, and many women who followed Jesus from Galilee ministered to him were there looking on from afar. Moms are always watching. Moms even seem to have eyes in the back of their heads. I know what you're doing. <laughs> it's just a special gift. They, have a, they, they keep a watchful eye on us. They protect us, doing what they can to keep us, keep us from harm. As these women watched with the horrific events of the day, and the events we're talking about is the day that Christ was crucified. The women were there watching their Lord and Savior, and Mary was watching her son being crucified. They knew that they were powerless to intervene. Even though I'm sure that welling up within them was that heart of the mother, they knew there was nothing they could do. Their motherly hearts were breaking as they witnessed the abuse that Jesus endured at the hands of the executioners. And finally, the death of the one that they loved. The watching didn't stop there, however. Down in verse 61, we find two of them watching at the tomb. And then on Sunday, they came back to watch the tomb again, hoping to gain access so they could wrap fragrant spices around the body of Jesus. Moms are watchers. They're guardians of the heart. Some years ago, on a hot summer day in South Florida, a little boy decided to go for a swim in the old swimming hole behind his house. In a hurry to dive into the cool water, he ran out the back door, leaving behind shoes, socks, and shirt as he went. He flew into the water, not realizing that as he swam towards the middle of the lake, an alligator was swimming towards the shore. His mother, in the house, was looking out the window, saw the two as they got closer and closer together. In utter fear, she ran towards the water, yelling to her son as loudly as she could. Hearing her voice, the little boy became alarmed and made a U-turn to swim to his mother. It was too late. Just as he reached her, the alligator reached him. From the dock, the mother grabbed her little boy by the arms just as the alligator snatched his legs. And this began an incredible tug of war between the two. The alligator was much stronger than the mother, but the mother was much too passionate to let him go. A farmer happened to drive by, heard her screams, raced from his truck, took aim, and shot the alligator. Remarkably, after weeks and weeks in the hospital, the little boy survived. His legs were extremely scarred by the vicious attack of the animal, and on his arms were deep scratches where his mother's fingernails dug into his flesh in her effort to hang on to her son that she so loved. The newspaper reporters who interviewed the boy after the trauma asked if he would show him his scars. The boy lifted his pant legs, and then with obvious pride, he said to the reporter, But look at my arms. I have great scars on my arms, too. I have them because my mama wouldn't let go. Hallelujah. Thank God for mamas who won't let go. You know, mamas, you have that ability to let go, not let go in the spirit. If you've got sons or daughters that don't know Christ as Savior, I want to encourage you to be like that mama. Grab hold of them in the spirit. Don't you dare let go. No matter how dark the situation may seem, even though it may seem that the enemy has them by the legs, is going to pull them under, you continue to hold on to those children. Don't give up. I don't care how old they are or how young they are. Don't you give up. The praying, be a praying mama. Be a praying and dads, you can pray as well. Church, we can pray as well. If you know of a child that has walked away from the Lord, by all means, go before the Father and you intercede for that child in Jesus' name. We are to, we're to wrestle against not flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and rulers of darkness in this dark age. We can come before the Father and ca- ask for that child. You know, the Lord is not desiring that any should perish. Did you know that? We need to, we need to understand that when, when people perish without the Father, that is not His will. He does not love it when that happens. He hates it when that happens. 
So if you've got a child or somebody that you know that doesn't know Jesus, hold on to them in the Spirit. Continue to pray for them. You have weapons that are more powerful than the enemy that has a hold of them. We're called to pray. Break the plans of the enemy over their life. I'm going to give you some instructions here. When you go in prayer before the Father, number one, you can break the plans of the enemy over their life. Those need to be broken. And the reason being is because it's hard to go in and rob the strong man's house if the strong man still lives there. Let me say that again. It's hard to rob the strong man's house if the strong man still lives there. As believers in Jesus Christ, you've been given authority. I have been given authority over the strong man of that house. Are you with me so far? You take the authority over that strong man, whatever it may be. And you begin to bind that strong man in the name of Jesus and cast him out. And then you ask that the Father would send the Holy Spirit to draw them unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. It is the Holy Spirit who draws us, who draws men unto Jesus. Now our part as believers is to tell people about Jesus. And that's the beauty of all this, of being a Christian. Our job is to tell people about Jesus. The Holy Spirit's job is to draw them unto Jesus. Are you with me? We are not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells inside of us and works through us and empowers us. But he's the one that draws them unto Jesus. So what we can do is we begin to take authority over those strongholds. We ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit in to, to draw them unto Jesus. And you start acting like they've got saved already. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. But we also want to step out in faith and believe God and say, Lord, I thank you for the salvation of fill in the blank. You with me? If they are still breathing, there is still hope for them. Hallelujah. That's good news right there. Moms, dads, relatives, friends. I've got a friend that I, I've been praying for for years. I think he's got to be the most stubborn person I know, aside from myself. But you know what? I refuse to give up on him. Won't do it. He's still breathing. There's still an opportunity for him to know Jesus Christ as Savior. I refuse to give up. I have relatives that don't know Christ as Savior. I refuse to give up. I am not going to write them off. I would encourage you not to do the same as well. To write them off, that is. That made sense. Sometimes I say things and afterwards I'm like, did I say that right? I'm sure nobody else has that problem in here. Back to the little boy. I'm sure we can all identify with him in one way or another. We have scars too. Not, for an, not from an alligator or something quite as dramatic, but the scars of a painful past. Some of those scars are unsightly and have caused us deep regret. But some wounds are because God has refused to let go of us. Remember the fierceness and ferocity of the mother's love? Guess where that came from? God himself. And when he watches over us, it's not a passive thing. I've mentioned this before. There was a song back in the 90s. I hated hearing it then. I still hate it now. God is watching us from a distance. That is just not true. God knows the very hairs on your head or their lack thereof. He knows everything about you. He knows your wants, desires, thoughts, everything. He's not watching from afar. He is right there next to us. God is actively involved in our lives, sometimes pulling us to safety Sometimes giving us discipline, always giving us what we need to be faithful to him and to move at, moving ahead and keep moving ahead with him. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the Lord's correction in my life. That just reminds me that I'm still his kid. The, the word tells us that the Lord chastens those he loves. He disciplines those he loves. Amen? He spanks our bottoms because he loves us. Point number three this morning. A godly mom follows Jesus. Matthew 27, 55, and many women who followed Jesus from Galilee. These, these women had been following Jesus for maybe three, three and a half years, somewhere in that neighborhood. They'd been around and heard his teachings. They had witnessed many of his miracles. Did you know there's so many miracles that Jesus did that there's not enough room in this world to contain them on paper? Did you know that we just get a little glimpse of what he's done? So don't think that God can't heal you. Don't think that God can't intervene in your circumstance because I promise you this, he can. Jesus healed, he still heals, and he will continue to heal. Amen? 
He is our healer. He is our provider. He is the one that takes care of us. Mm, where do you think mama's got it from? They got it from our Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. These women of resources had invested themselves into who Jesus was and what he was doing. I always have to admire the spiritual attentiveness I often see in women of faith. Somehow they seem to have extra wires that men do not seem to have, which gives them greater spiritual awareness. Perhaps that's one of the reasons why there's usually more women in, than men in church. Mothers, the greatest gift you can give your children is to pass on to them the faith and love you have for Jesus. And dads, you too, but we'll focus that in another mo- month. 2 Timothy 1.5. When I call to remember, it's the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, that I am persuaded is in you also. This again, Paul's talking to Timothy here. Moms, follow Jesus and pass it on to your kids and those around you. And if you don't have any children, you can still pass it on to those around you. Amen? We can be spiritual parents to people, spiritual brothers and sisters, and admonish them and, and help them walk in the faith. And that's good news. Hallelujah. Number four, a godly mom cares for the needs of those they love. Matthew 27, 55. And many women who followed Jesus from Galilee ministering to him. Moms give and give and give, often with very little thanks and reward. They go to great trouble to care for the needs of their families, lack of sleep, sleep, cooking, cleaning, doing laundry, often working outside the home, and so much more. I heard of a lady who decided to put together her resume as a mom, and it came out to be quite a long list. Moms, thank you. Many single moms have tried to fill the role of daddy as well, and this is where the church family can help. Moms not only tend to meet the physical needs of their family, but the emotional and spiritual needs as well. And I can't tell you how many people attribute their own faith and motivation to the prayers of their mother. Moms, you can make a difference. Dads, you too as well. Moms, you've got a tough job. You've passed the mommy test. Hallelujah. It reminds me when our youngest, we were walking through the um, the park. What's that? Uh, Patriot Point? Patriot Park. Wherever it is. Soccer games. Magnum was walking along with us, and he was just a toddler. He was just a few steps away from me, and I turned around just in time to see him reach down onto the ground and pick up a used cigarette butt, and he went. And I said, no, in slow motion, because that's how it happened. And he stuck it in his mouth, and it was too late. And it didn't take but a second, and he was going, I was almost going with him. I mean, it was just, (laughs) spit it out. And I I had some water with me. I said, drink some water. And he was like. (laughs) I know you were probably too, too young to remember, buddy, but you did that. Yeah. That boy, I failed the daddy test that day. I was too far away, I guess. Moms, there are, mom- there are moments of reward. But I also know that there's stress, heartache, and tons of work involved. We just want to say that what you do really does matter. It really does make a difference. So hang in there. (laughs) Keep up the good work. We'd be lost without you. How many know if it weren't for moms, none of us would be here today? That's right. Keep on watching, following Jesus, caring for needs and being there for your family. God has made you a guardian of the hearts and lives of those under your care. I'd like for everybody to stand and for the praise team to come. Bruce and the praise team to come, please. I'd like to suggest that there's another test we all need to pass this morning. No matter who you are, a relationship with Jesus Christ is the most important relationship you will ever have. Your marital status or whether you're a mom or dad is not the most important thing about you. You matter to God for who you are. On this Mother's Day, remember that you're not defined primarily by your role in a family, but by your relationship to Jesus as his follower. Jesus redefines what is the ultimate importance in Mark 3.35. The crowd had singled out Jesus' natural family, indicating that his mother and brothers are there. They're like, your mother and brothers want to see you. But notice how Jesus redirects this to show that a love relationship that leads to obedience is more important than any earthly family ties. 
Jesus said, whoever does the will of God, my father is my brother and sister and mother. So the question here this morning is, are you in his family? He sure wants you to be. I've actually heard it told me once that, Jason, you don't know what I've done. And I don't deserve this. You need to realize something. Christ's blood is stronger than anything you've ever done. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. To say that your sin is stronger than Christ's blood is actually arrogant. Let's just call it for what it is. And that should be good news to you. Because that means no matter what you've done, there's forgiveness of your sin. And Jesus wants you to respond to his invitation today. To follow after him. What's his invitation? Come unto me. That's his invitation. Maybe we all need to hear his invitation and whether we've answered it or not in the past. Answer it today and come close to him. To repent of our sin means to turn from those things that we formerly did. And then Jesus says, well, follow me. It's going to cost you everything. But it's worth it. Jesus gives us rest from a weary life of demands and expectations and unwanted surprises. He calls us to link our lives with him and he'll lead us and help us. So if you're in this place this morning or if you're listening online, you don't know Christ as Savior. You haven't made that step to follow after Jesus. I want to encourage you. I'll walk with you to come to Jesus. Don't wait another day. We're not promised tomorrow. All of us are living one heartbeat away from eternity. So where are you going when you die? That's the question. You can make sure of your salvation this morning by coming to Jesus. As the praise team leads us in a song, I'll be up at the altar. If you want me to pray with you, I'll be more than happy to do that. If you just want to spend time at the altar with the Lord, that's fine too. If you need healing, I'll be more than happy to pray with you about that as well. So would you come as the praise team leads us in this song? that way Let's go before the Lord one more time. Father, we thank you again for moms. I thank you for Jesus as well. Lord, thank you for the, the ministry uh, that he has in each and every one of our lives. I thank you that you see us uh, for, uh, as, as believers, as followers, as you see us and love us for who we are. Lord, we just thank you and praise you. I ask that you would empower us as we leave this place to minister the gospel, be it a stranger, a loved one, a friend, Lord, whoever it may be, that you would give us the right words to say in the hour that we need to say them. I pray for God opportunities this week 
divine appointments to minister the gospel. And I thank you for giving us boldness to speak your word. And by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy child, Jesus, as we pray for people. I thank you, Lord, again for the moms in this place today and those listening online as well. Please go with us from here. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Thank you for coming this morning. Ladies 18 and older, we have a gift for you in the back as you leave. Um, Enjoy your Mother's Day. There's no groups tonight. You're dismissed.